So this is a study where we're looking at the addition of venetoclax to azacitidine. So uh, azacitidine is a hypomethylating agent, and these, uh, this category of drug is basically the standard of care for high-risk uh, myelodysplastic syndrome. Um, however, th this treatment is not uh, ideal, so the response rates are not universal. Uh, the complete remission rates are about 20%, and also these responses are, are somewhat time-limited. Uh, so eventually the patients will lose their response. And once they do uh, progress uh, on hypomethylating agent, the outcome tends to be very pro poor with the overall survival being a median overall survival being in the four to six month range, depending on which studies you look at. So uh, we're looking at adding venetoclax to uh, azacitidine to try to uh, improve on these outcomes. And so this is a phase one, two study. Um, the, the part I'm presenting is only the phase one part. We haven't started the phase two dose expansion yet. Uh, so it's basically a, the dose escalation at this stage. Uh, uh, we've made it all the way up to uh, the, the fifth level of dose escalation. Uh, this study, we were including uh, HMA naive and uh, patients after HMA failure, and it's only high risk MDS. So they have to have uh, more than 5% blast and to be intermediate to or higher risk by IPSS. Uh, so the, the first objective was to basically see how well this regimen is tolerated. Uh, what we found is that uh, it is well tolerated. However, there, there is uh, quite a bit of myelosuppression and infections, which is not unexpected with this combination. You know, these are kind of the, the adverse effects we expect with each of these agents alone. So it's not surprising we still see this when they're combined. Um, but so far, uh, we, we've kind of been continually going up on the dose. So we're at the kind of the highest dose now and we're recruiting patients into that level. Uh, and then in terms of the efficacy, what we're seeing is very uh, high response rates, uh, over 90%, including in the HMA uh, failure uh, cohort. Only six patients in that cohort, but all of them have responded. Uh, and most of these responses are marrow CRs. So this regimen is very good at reducing the blast count and the bone marrow. Almost all patients will achieve that. Um, the, the thing that may be a bit suboptimal is the count recovery. Uh, so we see many patients don't fully recover their peripheral blood counts. Um, so that could be, you know, um, evidence of persistent disease, but also uh, we, we think there is a component of ongoing myelosuppression, especially from the venetoclax. These patients are continually exposed to venoclax, and that's quite myelosuppressive in MDS patients. So there is a component uh, of that probably as well in there. Um, so that's uh, kind of the gist of it. Uh, many patients in our study also uh, went off to go to transplant, so only got uh, a few cycles. Uh, so perhaps these patients would have recovered their counts kind of with more treatment, but we didn't get to see that because they kind of went off early and went to transplant. So uh, there are some limitations. So, so we're hoping to finish the... Uh, the dose escalation part of the study and then to move on to the dose expansion.